This multi-part question begins by giving us information about ethanol, whose uh, formula is given right there. I've taken that information and used it to construct a heat curve. Ethanol, for example, freezes at negative 114 degrees Celsius. It boils at 78 degrees Celsius. What that means is that at standard pressure, one atmosphere, anywhere below, 104, or below negative 114 degrees Celsius, ethanol will be solid. Solid all the way down to eternity. As soon as it hits negative 114 and you start cranking more heat into it, at that moment the temperature does not change until all of that amount of ethanol has been converted from a solid to a liquid. At this point, it's now a liquid. You continue increasing the temperature, at some point you'll get to 78 degrees Celsius, and then any additional heat that you throw in there will not change the temperature, but will all be used to convert that liquid into a gas. At this point, it's a gas, and it will remain a gas at the at one atmosphere of pressure for any temperature above 78 degrees Celsius off into eternity. So, this question asks us, how much heat is required to convert 42 grams of ethanol at 35 degrees Celsius, I forgot to write that in there, to the vapor phase at 78 degrees C? So somewhere in between negative 114 C and 78 degrees C is 35 degrees C, and I, I really haven't drawn this proportionally uh, well, but hopefully you can see that at 35 degrees Celsius, ethanol is going to be a liquid. So in order to convert 42 grams of ethanol to the vapor phase, what has to happen is I have to take that 42 grams, which is sitting at 35 degrees Celsius, and I have to warm it up to 78 degrees Celsius. Once I hit 78 degrees Celsius, then I have to take that 42 grams, and I have to convert all of it from a liquid to a gas. So in other words, I have to go from 35 up this slope uh, until I hit 78, and then I have to go across this plane, D. Now here's the trick. Whenever you want to do a conversion up one of these slopes, the equation that you're going to use is equation 5.22 from our text. And that equation says that the amount of heat, Q, required to do that temperature warming is equal to the specific heat of that substance multiplied by its mass, multiplied by the total change in temperature that you're talking about. In this case, I'm going to be throwing in 42 grams here, the change in temperature between 35 degrees Celsius and 78 right there, and then the specific heat for ethanol which is given. And by the way, this once again is going to be the equation that you'll use any time you're going up a slope on one of these heat curves. Anytime I'm going across a plateau, either plateau B or plateau D, I'm instead going to multiply the mass, so anytime I go across one of these plateaus, I'm going to multiply the mass by the molecular weight and take and multiply that by the delta heat of uh, the delta heat of the phase change. If it's vaporization, that's one phase change. If it's uh, melting, then it's another phase change. Whatever the phase change happens to be, those are the two equations. So once again, this is the uh, slope. This is the equation that we use for going up one of these slopes. This is the equation that we use for going across a plateau. Uh, so for, and I hope I'm spelling plateau correctly. I don't really know. It's a weird word. Anyway, so uh, for this problem, once again, we're having to convert from 35 degrees Celsius, warm it up to 78. That is part of a slope, so I'm going to be using this equation for that portion. And then I have to take it across the plateau D all the way to the end point. That will be using this equation. Got it? Good. Let's throw down some numbers. So, going from 35 to, uh, to 78C, I'm going to go ahead and write down Q equals the specific heat, and the specific heat was given to me in this problem, and it happens to be equal to uh, 2.3 joules per gram Kelvin, and then I'm going to multiply it by the mass that I've been given, which in this case is 42 grams. This specific heat, by the way, is, uh, is specific for ethanol at this pressure. And then I'm going to multiply that by delta T. And delta T is going to be 78 minus 35. This is degrees Celsius. No, 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 this is kind of... I realize that some of you guys are saying, now wait a minute, degrees Celsius doesn't cancel out with degrees Kelvin. But keep in mind, however, the only difference between Celsius and Kelvin is 273.15. Which means that if I put 273.15 and added it to 78 to convert this to Kelvin, I'd have to do the same thing to the degrees Celsius, and the difference between the two would be exactly the same. So to do this, I actually don't really need to convert to Kelvin, because all I care about is the difference between these two, which would be identical for Kelvin as it is for Celsius. So I can cancel out my Kelvin and my Celsius, 
going to be the same. I can cancel out my grams and my grams, and then I throw this into my calculator, and I end up with a final number of joules, which is an amount of energy. So the final answer ends up being 4,154 joules, which, if you want to do a quick conversion, you can convert that into 4.15 kilojoules for the number of significant figures that we've been given, which is three. Now... That is how much energy will be expended in order to raise 42 grams of ethanol from a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius to 78 degrees Celsius. We're not done. We now, so we're essentially right now at this point. Now I have to take my ethanol and I have to uh, vaporize it. So this 42 grams has to be completely heated up to where it converts from a liquid state at this point to a gaseous state at that point. That is where I'm going to go across the plateau. So I'm going to use this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write down Q, the amount of energy needed. It's going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the molecular weight multiplied by the delta H of the particular phase change that we're talking about, which in this case is going to be converting from a liquid into a gas. This delta H has been given to us in the problem. The mass that we've been given is 42 grams. I now multiply that by the molecular weight of ethanol. One mole of ethanol. Uh, ethanol has two carbons in it. Five, five, well, six hydrogens and an oxygen. The mass of that ends up being, uh, if you calculate the molecular weight, 46 grams in one mole. And now I'm going to multiply that by the delta H, uh, or the, the change in enthalpy required to convert uh, a liquid, liquid ethanol to gaseous ethanol, which once again was given to us in the problem. That happens to be 38.56 kJs per mole. So my moles cancel each other out, my grams cancel each other out, and I'm left with a certain number of kilojoules, which happens to come to 35.2 kilojoules. So here are the two amounts. It's going to take me 4.15 kilojoules to get the temperature difference from 35 to 78 degrees C to warm up that ethanol from 35 to 78 degrees Celsius, and then it's going to take me an additional 35.2 kilojoules to get that liquid ethanol to vaporize completely to gaseous ethanol. So the total amount of energy that's required is going to be this number added to that number. This question says how much heat is required to convert the same amount of ethanol, which is 42 grams I believe, to the vapor phase, except we're starting all the way down here at negative 155 degrees Celsius. Here's the point, just as I said before, remember anytime you're going up a slope, you use equation 5.2, which by the way, if you're taking the class from me, I will give you on the exam. Don't require you to memorize it. So that's, what, that's the equation that we use for going up a slope. Anytime you're going across a plateau, you use this equation. So going up a slope, I have to go from negative 155 to negative 114. Then I have to go across the plateau B, which is converting from a solid to a liquid. Then I have to go up slope C, uh, from negative 114 to 78, and then I have to grow, go across plateau D. So that is the journey that we have to do. First of all, let's start with slope A. Once again, I'm going to use this equation. Q is going to be equal to uh, the specific heat, and it tells me in the um, pr original problem what the specific heat of solid ethanol is, and that is 0.97 joules per gram Kelvin. And then I multiply it by the mass of ethanol that I've been given in the problem, which is 42 grams. And then I multiply it by delta T. Delta T is going to be the difference between negative 114 and negative 155. Negative 114 minus a negative 155, uh, which is really going to be the same thing as plus uh, 155. And that ends up giving me, I'm going to skip all the math and just let you do it in, on your calculators. That ends up giving me a final answer of... 1670 joules, which is the same thing as 1.67 kilojoules if I'm uh, fixing it for the right number of significant figures. In fact, that might not, not actually be completely correct, but I don't care. So what that means is that traversing from negative 155 to negative 114 with 42 grams of uh, ethanol is going to take 1.67 kilojoules, and I'll just go ahead and write that there. Now we have to go across plateau B, so I'm going to go ahead and write B. I'm going to use the plateau equation, which is the mass... 42.0 grams multiplied by the molecular weight, grams per mole. One mole of ethanol weighs 46 grams, and then I multiply that by the delta H of the phase change. Now, the phase we're talking about right here is going from solid to liquid. That number is going to be different than the one going from liquid to a gas. The phase change for going from a solid to a liquid is 5.02 kilojoules per mole.
Moles are going to cancel each other out, grams cancel each other out, and I'm left with a certain number of kilojoules. I throw that in my calculator, the number that I get is 4.58 kilojoules. So I'll go ahead and write down that traversing path B, or plateau B, with 42 grams of ethanol is going to cost me 4.58 kilojoules. I'll write that there. Now I have to go up slope C. I'm going to erase this here, so please take note of what it said, so that I can give myself room to go through slope C. So slope C, I'm going to once again use my slope equation up here, which is the specific heat of ethanol. Specific heat of liquid ethanol is uh, different. It's a 20, or sorry, 2.3 joules per gram Kelvin. And we have to make sure that we keep that in mind. The specific heat of solid ethanol is different from liquid ethanol is different from gaseous ethanol. I multiply that by the mass I've been given, which is 42 grams of this sample, and then I go delta T. Delta T is going to be 78 minus a negative 114. In other words, that's going to be plus 114. My uh, Kelvins cancel out with the Kelvins that I haven't written there. My grams cancel out with the grams. I throw that in my calculator, and I end up getting a final number in joules, which is um, 18,547 joules, which is uh, 18.5 kilojoules. That is the cost of going up slope C, so I'm going to go ahead and write down 18.5 kilojoules. Now I've taken my ethanol all the way up here, across here, and then up here I'm now, at this point, I now need to traverse plateau D. I'm going to use my plateau equation, which is the mass of the amount of ethanol that I've got, which is 42 grams, multiplied by the molecular weight of ethanol. One mole of ethanol once again weighs 46 grams. Better check. And then I multiply that by the delta H of converting liquid ethanol to gaseous ethanol, which is going to be different from the delta H of converting solid ethanol to liquid ethanol. The delta H for converting liquid ethanol to gaseous ethanol is 38.56 kgs, or kilojoules, sorry, per mole. And that was given to me in the original problem. Moles cancel each other out, grams cancel each other out, and I'm left with a final answer in kilojoules, which happens to be 35.2. That is the energetic cost of traversing plateau D. So, here's the sum up. Going from down here to up there cost me 1.67 kilojoules. Going across this plateau cost me 4.58 kilojoules. Going from up down this from this point to this point cost me 18.5 kilojoules. And then going from this point to that point cost me 35.2 kilojoules. What is the total energy expense to go through this whole journey? I add up each one of those four values, and that's the final answer.